What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Synology DS1019+. This is a network attached storage device, otherwise known as a NAS. Now I've been wanting to get one of these into my possession for a long time. There's a lot of stuff that we can do with this, but in this video we're going to do a quick unboxing. I'm going to give you an overview of the hardware specs. Then we're going to do a quick and simple setup on the NAS itself. I do have more videos planned coming up in the near future, like setting this up as a Plex server. We can even use this to serve our ROMs to different platforms like the Raspberry Pi or our PC. And then there's the whole case for virtualization on this. So I do have more videos coming. If you're interested in seeing any of that, definitely keep an eye on the channel. So here it is, the disk station DS1019 Plus from Synology. This is a five bay NAS, has a quad core CPU, eight gigabytes of RAM. It does 4K H.264 and 265 transcoding. So you can use this as a video or a media server. And like I mentioned, it's also easy to set up virtualization on something like this. If you're interested in picking up a NAS for your home or the office, Synology has an awesome selection system over on their website. I'll leave a link in the description. Just estimate the storage and what you're going to be using one of these for, and they will recommend one of their units for you. With a NAS like this, you will have to provide your own drives. Now, for this video here, I only have three 6TB Ironwolf Seagate drives, and that's what I'm going to be using. I do have a few more on order so I can fully stack this thing out. But in this video, we're just going to be dealing with three 6TB drives. It does support 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drives. This model also offers two M.2 slots on the bottom for storage cache. Now this is going to allow you to access the files that you normally use most a lot faster running them from an M.2. So in the box, you're going to get two shorter ethernet cables. I do recommend getting something longer depending on where you're going to place this. We also have our 120 watt power supply, some extra screws for the 2.5 inch hard drives if you opt to use them and our hard drive bay keys. Moving on to the specs, our CPU is the Intel Celeron J3455. This is a quad core CPU at 1.5 gigahertz, but it will burst up to 2.3 for short periods of time. As for the built-in hardware transcoding engine, H.264 HVC, H.265 HEVC, MPEG-2, and VC-1. For unsupported formats, you can always download a third-party application from their package center, and I'm gonna show you how that works by the end. This model came with 8GB of DDR3 pre-installed. There are two 4GB sticks. This is SODIMM RAM and you could upgrade it to 16GB down the road if you really wanted to. Five drive bays, like I mentioned, 3.5 or 2.5 will fit for a total of 70 terabytes with the five drives. That's five 14 terabyte drives. Actual usable space will vary depending on how you have everything formatted and set up. Two M.2 slots on the bottom for storage cache. This will make accessing files that you normally access the most much faster. Two RJ45 gigabit ethernet ports on the back, two USB 3.0 ports, and one eSATA. Synology has made hardware and software setup on this unit very user friendly. We're gonna go over installing a couple drives right now and then we'll dive right into setting this up on our network. The hard drives I chose are Seagate Ironwolf 6TB drives. I'm going to install three of them now. I'm actually waiting on two more to come in the mail. But as of right now, when I get this set up, I'm only going to have around 10 to 12 terabytes of storage. The other 6TB drive is going to be used as backup. Installing drives is very easy. Just use the provided key to unlock the bay. We're going to pull the bay out so we don't need any screws. Now you could use screws if you really wanted to. They do provide extras for you. But all you really need to do is mount the hard drive in the rack. Make sure it's flush. and then we're going to snap the locks back into place. Once everything's set up, we're just going to slide it back into the server, lock it down. Now you can use the key to relock it if you want to. Now they won't come out unless they're unlocked. I'm going to pull these out so we can get a look inside of here real quick. Basically, it's just a custom I.O. board in here with SATA and power, so your drive will connect right into those slots. I'm going to go ahead and install my other two drives, and we're almost ready to power this thing up. So I have my drives installed properly. All we need to do now is plug it into an Ethernet source. This is coming from my router, and we'll also have to plug in the power. We're going to turn the unit around and press the power button. 
So this could take a little while to boot up the first time. We do need to do some setup. I'm gonna move over to one of my PCs that's on the same network. We're gonna to connect to this. We do have some setting up to do and I'm gonna walk you through it now. All right, so now that we have the hardware set up, everything's plugged in and powered on, we're gonna head over to a PC on our home network and we need to do a little bit of software setup. I'm just gonna open up Chrome and I'm gonna type in HTTP findsynology.com. It's going to search the network and find the NAS. As you can see, we just click connect. We're going to have to agree to the terms here. You can go ahead and read through this if you want. I agree. Okay. Since I installed my own drives, I'm going to have to install the disk station manager, DSM. I'm just going to install now. I understand. This could take a little while depending on your internet connection. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. Just let this finish up. It's gonna format the system. It's gonna install this proprietary operating system they have to the NAS, and then we can finish with the initial setup. When DSM is fully installed, the unit will reboot. You'll be brought to a screen that looks like this. We need to create an admin account. You're gonna create your server name, username, password, and you're also gonna confirm the password. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. DSM update and maintenance, install the latest DSM version automatically. That's what I want. You can choose something else if you'd like to. So I leave both of these checked. Run smart tests to check the health of the hard drives periodically and enable bad sector warning for drives. I just leave it at 50. Click next. I do recommend creating a Synology account. You can skip it if you want to, but I do recommend doing it. I've already got an account, but I'm gonna skip this for this setup video. We're all set. And I usually leave this unchecked. Click go. And here it is. On the initial setup, you'll get some tips that pop up. I do recommend reading through them. There's a get started with DSM, DSM and packages. Read through everything you can if you've never messed with one of these before. Everything you see running on screen is being pulled from the server. It's running in a browser. I'm just going to press F11 to full screen it. I think it looks a little better like this. Now it's time to set up our storage. We don't have any volumes available, even though we have three six terabyte drives in this unit. We need to set them up. So we're gonna head over to the top left-hand corner, main menu, storage manager. From the overview menu, we have three disks available. There are two slots that are free, so we can add two more disks later on down the road. We wanna go to volume. There is no volume in your system. We need to create one. So we're gonna click create. There's two ways we can go about this. You can go custom, you can go all out with this setup, or you could go quick. This is gonna be super simple for anyone who's just starting out with this, and it's gonna work fine for 99% of the people out there that just want one of these in their home to back up movies, home videos, photos, even security cameras will work on something like this. So I'm gonna go with quick. This is gonna use Synology's hybrid RAID, SHR. So I'm gonna click next. From here, I'm gonna stick with SHR. Now you can go with SHR2, but the problem is you need four drives. I only have three in this system. So I'm gonna go with SHR, next. As you can see, all of my hard drives are selected. What this is gonna do is create a 12 terabyte storage solution for me, and I'm gonna have six terabytes of backup protection. So I'm gonna click next. All data on the newly added hard disk will be erased. Are you sure you wanna continue? Now this isn't gonna erase the DSM that we installed. This is just gonna partition and erase our hard drive so we can use them as storage. I'm gonna click OK. We have two formats that we can choose from, BTRFS or EXT4. I recommend BTRFS, so does Synology, so that's what I'm gonna choose. You can go with EXT4 if you want, but some of the advanced features will not be available. So I'm gonna click Next. We're gonna take a look at how we have this set up before we click Apply and it looks good to me. I'm gonna have about 11 terabytes of storage with that extra six terabytes as backup. Click apply. If I had one extra six terabyte drive, I could do 12 terabytes of storage and 12 terabytes of backup, but I only have three drives right now, so we're gonna be doing it this way. We now have the array set up, but we need to create a shared folder. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down and head over to control panel. From here, shared folder. Make sure shared folder is highlighted and we want to create. Now you can name this anything you want. I'm just going to go with my media. Description. Location. We only have one SHR available, so we're going to go with that 10 terabytes. Hide this shared folder in my network places. Hide subfolders and files from users without permission. Enable recycling bin. 
restrict access to administrator only. In my house, I'm the only one who's going to be accessing this, and I'm the administrator, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. If you'd like to set up encryption, you can check this, set up an encryption key, and confirm the key. I'm going to leave this off for now and click Next. Enable data checksum for advanced data integrity. This is part of SHR, and I want to leave this enabled. I'm not a big fan of file compression over network, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. You can even enable a shared folder quota. I'm going to leave this unchecked also. Now remember, this is just a quick look and setup video. If you want to go all out with encryption, that's totally up to you. There are tons of tutorials online, but I wanted to get this out of the way to get you up and running as fast as possible. Click Apply. Edit Shared Folder. We can restrict access to this folder here. I don't mind if my guests get on here. I'm really not going to have anybody on this server anyway. But you can always no access. I can have no access from myself. I can read and write from the admin. I'm just going to leave these all unchecked. It's really up to you. And if you create another user on this account, it'll be listed here. So if you have kids and you want them to upload their photos here, you can set it as custom. You can give them no access at all, read and write, or read only. And there it is. We now have a shared My Media folder. If I go to File Station, we'll see it right here. So we now have a shared folder set up. This is My Media. I can access this from any PC in the house. I can drag and drop photos, videos, or whatever I want in here and access them on every single computer that connects to this NAS. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to get one of these in the house was to back up all of my videos. I do all of my work in Final Cut Pro on a Mac and I'm gonna be able to automatically back up each one of my libraries as soon as it's created. But for now, I just wanna show you that we do have access to that server on this other PC or this Mac. We're gonna to go to Network. It's listed right here. We can connect as. I'm just going to put in my username and password. And here it is. That's the shared folder we just created. I'm just going to go ahead and drop a couple thumbnails in here. And that's it. Now these are backed up on my home server. I'm going to move back over to the other PC we were just using, and we'll be able to see each one of these thumbnails on the server. As you can see, all three of those test thumbnails are on the server. I can browse them from any PC in my house as long as it's connected to this server. So everything that I just showed you was a super simple setup. There are countless things that we can do with this NAS, and one of my favorite parts is the Package Center from Synology. From the Package Center, we can download easy-to-use applications. So here's Active Backup for Business. Um, there's antivirus. I would never use McAfee, but it's there if you want to. Calendar, audio station, Plex media server. So we can set this up as an in-home Plex media server, and it works really well. I do have a video on that coming up very shortly, so keep an eye on the channel. One of my favorite things to do with this is actually virtualization. Now, this does have 8 gigabytes of DDR3 built in. It's not the fastest processor in the world, but if you want to mess around with a different operating system and you don't want to set it up in VM on your PC, you can run it directly off of this NAS inside of a browser. For instance, the Virtual Machine Manager. I'm just going to go ahead and install it. When it's finished installing, we can open it from here or from our little app section. And this makes it super easy to run a virtual machine on the server. So we'll click Next. I'm going to use this volume. It's not going to use the whole volume, but when we set up our virtual machine, we can choose how much space we want to allocate for it. Open vSwitch, ARP Ignore. I'm just going to click Next and Yes. Microsoft Windows, Linux, or Synology Virtual DSM. I'll be messing around with some Linux stuff in the future, so keep an eye on the channel. One of the things I've really been thinking about doing was setting up Linux and then installing RetroPie on it and running it from a NAS. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. I think it'll run pretty good, and you could actually access this from a cell phone. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned in the beginning, Synology has a full NAS selection service over on their website, so you can go through and just find out what NAS is good for you. They pretty much have everything you're ever going to need, from a single drive NAS just for photos in the house, all the way up to a giant corporation sized server. If you guys are interested in seeing anything running on this unit, like in virtualization or anything else, just let me know in the comments below. I will be doing a full Plex tutorial coming up very shortly. And like I said, I think I'm going to try running RetroPie on here.
Links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.